I'm now going to talk about how to find the area under a parametrized curve. And I'm going to assume that this parametrized curve is always moving to the right or to the left. So its tangent is never vertical. So I have a parametrized curve, x equals f of t, y equals g of t, and t goes from alpha to beta. And I'm assuming that the curve in the plane is the graph of a function. So it looks like y equals h of x. And let's also assume that this function is always positive. And this function goes from x equals a to x equals b. So these are different from alpha and beta. So alpha and beta are the t limits, and a and b are the x limits. And I'd like to calculate the area of this region. So how can we do that? Well, we know from single variable calculus that the area is the integral from a to b of h of x dx. But I want the answer in terms of f and g. So this function h is determined implicitly by f and g, but it might be difficult to solve for it explicitly and evaluate this integral. So I want to rewrite this in terms of f and g. And how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to do a substitution. So instead of integrating over x, I want to integrate over t. So we write dx. So since x equals f of t, differentiating this, this gives us dx equals f prime of t dt. And also h of x, well, that's y. And y is g of t, so h of x is g of t. So what do we get from this integral? Well, I get the integral of g of t times f prime of t dt. And what should the limits be? Well, the limits are alpha and beta. Those are the t limits. So is that correct? Well, almost. So there's one little detail, which is that this is actually just plus or minus. And why is that? Well, the lower limit of this integral needs to be the value of t that corresponds to x equals a. And the upper limit of this integral needs to be the value of t that corresponds to x equals b. So if t equals alpha corresponds to x equals a, then we don't need a sign. So this is plus if a equals x of alpha and b equals x of beta. And it's minus if a equals x of beta and b equals x of alpha. And what does that mean geometrically? Well, a equals x of alpha and b equals x of beta, that's when our curve is going to the right. Okay. And the other case is when the curve is going to the left. So another way to say it is it's plus when the curve is going to the right. And minus when the curve is going to the left. And if you forget the sign, or if you forget to check the sign while you're doing it, whenever you're calculating the area of something, at the end of the calculation, as a reality check, you should make sure that your answer is not negative, because areas are never negative. So if you calculate the area of something and you get a negative number, then you messed up one of these signs somewhere in your calculation. All right, so let's do an example. Example, let's calculate the area enclosed by the unit circle which we'll parametrize as x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So here, remember, the arrow goes around counterclockwise like this. Now, the formula we derived on the previous page is for the area under a part of the curve that looks like a graph. So in particular, I could use that formula to find the area in between the upper half of the circle and the x-axis. And my symmetry, this is half of all of the area enclosed. So I can calculate that area and multiply by 2.
So the area is 2 times the integral, well, what are the t values in this part of the circle? Well, this is where t goes from t equals 0 to t equals pi. So I go from 0 to pi of y of t times x prime of t dt. Is that correct? Well, not quite. So see how I left a little space here? We have to put a minus sign there. And that's because the curve is going to the left. OK, now we can do the calculation. So if minus 2 times the integral from 0 to pi, and y of t is sine t, and x is cosine t, so x prime is minus sine t dt. So this is 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of sine squared t dt. And to integrate sine squared, remember this little trick that cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1, and cosine squared t minus sine squared t equals cosine 2t. So if I subtract these two equations and divide by 2, I get sine squared t equals 1 minus cosine 2t over 2. You could also add the equations, then you'd put a plus here, and you'd get cosine squared t instead. Okay, so this is 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of 1 minus cosine 2t over 2 dt. I can cancel out these 2's here. So the antiderivative is t minus sine 2t over 2, which I evaluate at t equals pi and t equals 0. So the t part gives me pi, and the sine 2t over 2 gives me nothing, because at both t equals pi and t equals 0, that's equal to 0. So I just get pi. And this is what I was supposed to get. Let's do another example. Let's calculate the area enclosed by the asteroid x equals cosine cubed t, y equals sine cubed t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So here's the picture again. We saw before that it has a fourfold symmetry, and the upper part of the curve is where t goes from 0 to pi. So once again, the area is obtained by taking the first half, where you go from 0 to pi, and multiplying by 2. And I also need a minus sign because the curve is going to the left. And then I have y, which is sine cubed t, times the derivative of x, which is minus 3 cosine squared t sine t dt. So this is 6 times the integral from 0 to pi of sine to the fourth t times cosine squared t dt. So you need some more trig identities to do this. So one way to do it is to recall that sine 2t equals sine t, sorry, 2 sine t cosine t. So I have a sine squared t cosine squared t, and that is sine squared 2t over 4. So that gives me a sine squared and a cosine squared. Then I have a sine squared left, which as we saw on the last page is 1 minus cosine 2t over 2 dt. So I'll leave the rest of this for you to do as a review. Uh, so skipping a couple of steps, this comes out to be 3 pi over 8. That's the area enclosed by the asteroid. So a couple of more general remarks about calculating areas. So we saw that if you have a piece of curve that's going to the right, then to calculate this area, this is plus the integral from alpha to beta of y x prime of t dt. I wrote these before where x is f and y is g, but you can write it this way too. 
if we have a piece of curve going to the left like this, then this area is minus the integral from alpha to beta of y x prime of t dt. What if we want to calculate the area um, between part of the curve that's below the axis and the x-axis? So here if you're going to the right, then, well, we can write this integral of y x prime dt, but we need a minus sign because it's below the axis. So just like in the usual integrals of single variable calculus, if you integrate f dx, if f is negative, you're getting minus the area between the graph and the x-axis. And finally, if I have a region which is below the axis and going to the left, like this, then this is actually plus the integral from alpha to beta of y x prime dt. So there's one minus sign because it's below the axis, and another minus sign because it's going to the left. It's a more general fact that if you have any curve which doesn't cross itself, and starts and ends at the same point. Like if I have a curve like this, do I want to calculate this whole area that it encloses? Then the area is plus or minus the integral over the whole curve of y x prime dt. And this sign is plus if you go clock, counterclockwise around the curve. That is, as you're walking along this curve, the enclosed region is to the left. Otherwise, it's a minus sign. So this is just an aside for your amusement. We will actually prove this much later in the course when we talk about Green's theorem. So this will be an immediate consequence of Green's theorem once we prove it. Anyway, that's enough about the areas enclosed by parameterized curves. And in the next lecture segment, we'll see how to calculate the length of a parameterized curve.